Hello everybody, welcome to another Flaming Dice Reviews video review. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at Cash and Guns, 2nd edition. My name is Matt. Dan. Aiden. Alright. Uh, we picked up this game a few weeks ago, played it at one of our game nights. Uh, had a lot of fun. Game's definitely got some quirks. Uh, I think some people will be a little bit turned off uh, just because it is not politically correct. You actually aim guns at each other. Uh, even though they are black foam orange tip guns, some people are going to get offended by that, I would, I would imagine. Uh, so right now we're going to take a look at what's inside the game and we'll be back for our final thoughts. I didn't get a gun out. In Cash and Guns, players are successful criminals after a lucrative heist. Uh, therein lies the theme of the game. The, everything starts to fall apart once the criminals are back at their base and they're divvying up their loot. Uh, the players then turn their guns on one another, and I'll show you an example of that in just a moment, uh, and all heck breaks loose. Uh, depending on whether or not a player's gun is loaded, people can get shot, uh, players can be killed and eliminated, Everyone that's standing at the end of the gun pointing phase gets to divvy up the loot. Now let's take a look at what that phase looks like and then we'll look at the loot itself. Each round, we're going to count to three and then players point their guns at, at one another. They get to choose who they point their gun at. For example, one, two, three. Now, I've got two guns pointed at me, but I am the godfather. So I'm going to make one of them choose another player to point their gun at. You, change who you're pointing your gun at. All right, still got one gun pointed at me. Let's see how this goes. So we're gonna count to three again. Players have the option of either staying in the round and risk getting shot, or they can duck and get out of the way. So one, two, three. Everybody's in. All right, so let's flip over our cards and see what happened. Mine was a click. Dagan does not get shot. Dagan was a click. Aiden does not get shot. Oh, Aiden's was a bang. I'm out of this round, and I take a wound token. Three wound tokens, and I'm out of the game. Now, because I'm out of this round, I don't get to take part in the loot sharing, so these two get to share the spoils of war. I do not until next round. Let's take a look at the loot cards. Players who survive... Uh, till the end of each round, uh, also known as they do not get shot, uh, get to take part in the loot sharing. So let's take a look at what some of those are. Players can opt to take straight cash, which can come in 10,000, 5,000, 20,000 increments. They can choose to take paintings, which the, at the end of the game, the more paintings you have, the more they're worth. For example, one painting at the end of the game is worth $4,000. 10 paintings are worth 500,000. Diamonds uh, are another special prize. At the end of the game, the player with the most diamonds gets a $60,000 bonus. They can take this ammo clip, which lets them get back one of their bang cards. Uh, they can take a first aid kit, which lets them heal themselves, or they can take the Godfather desk, which lets them become the Godfather for that round. And as seen in the previous example, it can give you a pretty big advantage. Another thing worth mentioning about Cash and Guns is that the artwork is done by John Kavolik, which anyone who has played the Munchkin games is familiar with. All of the characters, the loot cards, and uh, I believe all of the artwork in the game was done by him. It looks absolutely fantastic. All right, welcome back. Now that we've seen what's inside of the game, let's talk about some of our uh, our final thoughts and the Flaming Dice Reviews score. Uh, I actually really enjoy Cash and Guns. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, I think the lack of political correctness is going to turn some people off. Some people just are not going to get over the fact that you point guns at each other. That's just a sad fact that people can't get over that, I think. Um, one of the other downsides to the game, a few downsides, is that you can get eliminated uh, very quickly, as we found out. Uh, Aiden, was it you that got eliminated on the third turn last game, or was that Dagan? 
I think it was both of us. Yeah, y'all both got eliminated pretty quick. Uh, so because of the way the wounds work, and because a player can take multiple wounds in one turn, and the max, the low max life, a player can get eliminated very quickly. That's the other downside. Uh, on a plus side, it plays a lot of people. Uh, what did you like about the game? That you could play with your whole entire family. Yep, up to eight people. That's pretty cool. So it supports four to eight players. What did you like? I like getting the loot and getting something that the people that the other players really wanted. Yep, that is cool. Uh, all of the players that survive around, uh, as we mentioned, gets to divvy up the loot that's on the table, and that is pretty cool. Uh, whenever I ran it through the Flaming Dice Reviews scoring system, uh, which scores on eight categories, including artwork, component quality, uh, fun, replayability, uh, it did get an 88 out of 100, which is really, really good. Like I said, it's not going to appeal to everybody, but I think the game is has a lot of replayability, uh, very easy to learn. I really enjoyed it. Uh, any final thoughts on the game? Um... No. No? Did no. you like it? Yes. What about you? Yeah, I liked it. You liked it? Mm -hmm. Alright. How much did you like it? Mm, 100. You give it 100 out of 100? Yeah. Don't listen to him. 88 out of 100. We'll see you next time.